Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rachakwadash, which is to say the name of the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew tongue. I also want to give double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And I also want to send out the hearty, a hearty shalom to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk your lives doing so and never to waken up the hopefully elect of the nation of Israel. This is your brother Karab from the Great Millstone, Miami, coming back at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And Lord willing, this is edifying. Okay. Now, uh, the title of this lesson is going to be Foresight. Okay. Um, foresight. And um, outside of you know, basically us being called, you know, into this ministry and uh, being quickened with the Holy Spirit, you know, outside of those things. OK, having that foresight, OK, or, 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 or basically having the understanding of prophecy is one of the greatest gifts that we have. OK, because not only does it give us an understanding of what's going on around us, OK, but it also gives us hope, you know, because hey, things that are, haven't yet happened. OK, are, are written in the scriptures, you see, and renowned men going back into antiquity read about things that are happening now today or things that happened a thousand years ago. OK, and that's one of the greatest gifts we can have. OK, why? Because it gives you prudence and gives you understanding and more importantly, um, allows you to make preparations and the preparations that we make. OK really are not physical they're not carnal okay the preparations that we make are spiritual you see like it says in revelations the third chapter uh third chapter in the 10th verse it says uh because you have kept the patience of my word i will also keep you from the hour of temptation and that's what everything is boiling down to okay the hour of temptation which we know uh is the implementation of the microchip okay the karagma you see but the key point in that is um, there's nothing. Well, obviously, we study, we read, we, we do shows. OK, but the basis of that is spiritual, you see. And what I mean by carnal or physical is hoarding up water and, you know, uh, getting uh, bug out bags, which things you can do. OK, but ultimately, those things are not going to preserve us or keep us in the times of trouble. You see. But having that understanding of prophecy and that foresight, OK, we can prepare our minds spiritually and mentally. OK, because the scriptures tell us what wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, not water and bug out bags. Now, hey, the reality is, if you want to get a bug out bag, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. OK, I still have my rib looking, you know, for certain, uh, 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 you know, um, Things we, we can put in a bug out bag, but having the full surety and understanding that that bug out bag is not going to save us. OK, wisdom and knowledge is going to stabilize us. And ultimately, keeping the patience of the Heavenly Father's word is what will save us. OK, and being diligent and continuing in the faith until the end. OK, but like I've been saying, one of the greatest gifts is, is the spirit of prophecy and the ability to have foresight, okay? Now, let's get the definition of foresight real quick, okay? And, you know, it's pretty basic and pretty simple what it's saying, you know, uh, foresight. Like, you have hindsight, which means, because like the uh, saying in the world, hindsight is twenty twenty. meaning after it's already happened, of course, you know exactly what you should have done or what you shouldn't, shouldn't have done, okay? And that's what it means by hindsight. But foresight... It's something that's highly coveted, okay? All the top scholars, the elites of this world, they want to know what's going to happen before it happens, okay? And, you know, being the devil that they are, you know, they watch the prophets, they watch the elders, okay? They, they try their best to study the scriptures. And, and some of the things that, that's going to happen, they know, okay? But they, what they really don't understand, that they're being moved by the spirit of the heavenly father on the left-hand side. OK, so everything that they do is fulfilling prophecy. OK, just like in Game of Thrones with brothers who are familiar to uh, with it, uh, Cersei, you know, her whole thing, you know, uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> brothers who haven't watched it. Uh, but uh, her whole uh, mission, 
okay, uh, with, uh, was to upset prophecy because she went to a witch and she foretold her what her, her future would be. And she fought tooth and nail to try to disannul it. But everything she did uh, um, basically uh, fulfilled what the uh, witch had told her. OK, and that's exactly what Esau Edom is doing. Everything that he's doing is playing right into the hands of prophecy. Why? Because everybody's marching to the tone of prophecy. You see? OK, but foresight is from the early 14th century. It means insight obtained beforehand. You see? And what's the insight? The understanding of the scriptures, the prophecies. OK, which a hey, the Wadi Yahweh Shimei was shot for the elder uh, apostles of great millstone and the men under them. Okay. Because they taught us these prophecies. When you read, uh, what is that? Um, Philippians, I believe that's Philippians, the uh, fourth chapter where it speaks on, uh, the neglect, not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee. Salaki, let me get it real quick, real quick. I'll get it on my other phone. Cause I want to stay right here with the foresight. Uh, let me get it. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite precepts. This is, um, bear with me. Let this phone load up. This is Philippians chapter four. It's not here. Wait, Philippians. Bear with me. Salakia, I'm all I'm in the wrong book. Salakia. Salakia, Salakia. This is uh I don't know what I was thinking about. Um I found it. This is um <clears throat> Matter of fact, it's in First Timothy. Salaki just had a brain fart. This is First Timothy chapter four. <clears throat> wow, I was in Thessalonians. Salaki, please bear with me and forgive me. <laughs> This is First Philippians, <clears throat> so like in First Timothy's, chapter four. Um, let's see. We we'll started thirteen. First Timothy's four and thirteen. It says, "Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine." Verse fourteen: Neglect not the gift that is in thee. Okay, which is just truth, spirit. OK, and uh, we, we, we like to correlate us waking up to being like a sleeper cell. OK, and hearing the prophets, uh, 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 mainly the elder apostles and, you know, the brothers that, that, that have been laboring in this thing. Heard that voice behind us and it sparked that gift that was in us. You see, it says neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy. With the laying on the hands of the presbytery, meaning the work of the elders, the elder apostles, you see? And that's why, hey, they, they are worthy of double honors, okay? Because they've given us foresight. They have uh, gave us the understanding of the prophecies, which gives us foresight and gives us and makes, in, 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 um, in essence, causes us to make preparations, okay, for the times that are coming. You see, verse 15, it says, meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continuing them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Okay, so one of the main catalysts for this process is the, the presbytery, okay? The elder apostles who the heavenly father set up, okay, uh, 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 to stir up that gift that was in us. Okay, which ultimately uh, was through the spirit of prophecy, you see. And when you uh, uh, conversate, well, in, uh, in my case, the majority of the brothers I've conversated with, if not all, okay, when it comes to coming into the faith, it basically was spurred by 
understanding what was going on in the world and really being afraid and not having the answers. OK. And as Israelites, our mindset, OK, by nature uh, uh, brings us back to a higher power. OK. Now, whether you neglect that or you dig into it, hey, that's totally up to the Heavenly Father. OK. Why? Because we know the scriptures speak about predestination. OK. And those he chose since the foundation of the world. OK. But I just wanted to bring that point to show you the importance uh, of foresight and connect it with the scriptures. OK. But it says early 14th century insight obtained beforehand. Also prudence. You see, like I mentioned early, uh, earlier before. OK. The, the understanding of the prophecies and having foresight gives us prudence. You see. And it says. Um, uh, yep. It says attention, caution, cautiousness. OK. And I found that very keen, man. OK, because that, that's exactly what understanding the prophecies and having foresight does. OK. It makes us be cautious. Why? Because we understand, uh, uh, um, you know, all of the things that have been prophesied. OK. Like the scriptures say, the Heavenly Father declared the end from the beginning. OK. And we understand he's in complete control and understanding. Look, just like it was written in Deuteronomy 28 that we were going to cargo slave ships. OK. Or, or um, you know, 70 A.D., Yahweh Shah prophesied. He prophesied to the people and it happened. Just like uh, uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 68 happened. And just like all the other prophecies happened. OK. So that gives us confidence that just as those prophecies came to pass, these will as well. OK. And that's why we walk with that cautiousness. OK. Or that attention or caution. Why? Because it makes us prudent. You see? So let's jump on into this thing. This is um, let's start with uh, revelations. OK. And one of the most important reasons uh, for, uh, you know, the, the importance of prophecy. OK, because if you consider yourself a preacher, well, the word preach or preacher means to say before. OK, so all of these, uh, 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 you know, even a hey, even amongst the Israelites, all these pseudo Israelite groups and uh, uh, preachers in the church. If they ain't prophesying, then they're not preaching. OK, because the word preach means to say before. Put simply, it's another way of saying prophesy. OK, but this is Revelation chapter 19. Verse 10, it says, um, let me see. Let's start at 10, get straight to the point. This is Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. Matter of fact, I'll start at 9. It says, and he saith unto me, and obviously this is an angel speaking to John the Revelator. He says, and he saith unto me, right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of the Most High. Verse 10, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see, thou do it not. OK, why? Because this was a celestial angel and John the Revelator was considered what? A terrestrial angel. OK, because the word angel simply means messenger. And you have two types. You have a celestial, meaning an angelic, uh, uh, a meaning uh, 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 of, of the heavens that can go into different realms. OK, that can manifest, disappear, become uh, the form of any image. You see? It says, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said, do, uh, and he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the most high for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Okay. So right there, that nips it in the bud. That shows Hey, if you consider yourself testifying of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, okay, whose name is Yahweh Shai, you have to have the spirit of prophecy. If you don't have the spirit of prophecy, you cannot testify of him, okay? Or like the scriptures say, you're speaking of another Jesus or another Yahweh Shai, okay? Not the one that is written uh, 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 in the scriptures, okay? And that's plain. I read it again. Uh, Revelations 19 and 10 and I fell at his feet to worship him 
And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the Most High, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Period. Okay? And that's what it boils down to. You see? And that's a that's a cut to all the, the pseudo-Israelite groups. Okay? And you these false, uh, wacky-tacky Christians, man. If he's not prophesying, if he's not saying what's going to happen before it happens, okay? And, and, and not just uh, prophesying deceits, saying you're going to get your bow ass or you're going to get your you're going to have your beautiful day. OK, and you're still eating pork, shrimp, lobster and, and not keeping the commandments of the scripture to the best of your ability. You're going to be destroyed. OK. And that's another reason for the importance of prophecy. OK, because the scripture tell us what through the terrors of the Lord, we persuade men. Now, we can go into the scriptures and show you the things that the Heavenly Father has done to men and women and children and old maids okay and then we can go into scriptures and show you what's going to happen in the near future you see which entails what prophecy and that shows the importance like the scriptures say when you go into i forget which first or second corinthians when it speaks about the different gifts and you know uh blessings uh like having charity you know and doing alms things of that nature but the scriptures go on to say, well, I'd rather that you prophesy, okay? Because like Yahweh Shah said, he came to minister not to be ministered unto. And that's the mindset that we all should take, you know? But obviously understanding that the Most High set up other ministers. So guess what? We minister one to another, you see? But our mindset is, look, we came to minister. That's why we're ordered to go out and teach the word, okay? We eat the whole roll and then we go out and teach it. Okay, and the basis of our testimony and the basis of our ministry is what? Prophecy. Okay, why? Because we're testifying of our Lord Yahweh Shai, who is forth to come. You see? Um, this is um, this is Proverbs chapter twenty two. Yep, Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 3. It says, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Okay? And what makes them simple? They're not prudent. Okay? They don't have the foresight. They can't foresee what's coming. Okay? And they're living this American dream. They're lost in the sauce. Okay? But to the contrary, it says, A prudent man foreseeth the evil. And hide of himself. And where are we hiding ourselves? Proverbs 8. Matter of fact, let's get it real quick. Proverbs 18 and 10. And it reads, it says, The name of Yahweh by Shimei was shy is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Okay, now obviously there is a, there is not a tower that has the writing of Yahweh by Shimei was shy on it. Okay, and you just run in there and you're safe. No, obviously everything that the scripture entails about our Lord, our Heavenly Father, and 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 His Son, okay, our Savior. You see, and if you believe in that name, you're gonna do the things that He asks you to do if you believe in it. Okay, so the scripture tells us what we run into that tower and we're safe. Okay, and, and going back to uh, verse 22, Proverbs 22 and 3, it says, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, right, in that tower. It says, But the simple pass on and are punished. You see? So showing you the, <laughs> the, the importance of having foresight, understanding prophecy. Because if you don't, you're going to be destroyed. Why? Because you're going to fall into the rap. Uh, uh, to the grasp or or the clutch of the wicked one okay because like i mentioned earlier he 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 watches the prophets he watches the elder apostles okay now does he wholeheartedly believe in the prophecies that we're bringing out and how we're breaking it down no but he's making preparations as well okay why do you think he has a space force 
Okay, the scriptures speak about that war in heaven with Michael and his angels fought against Satan and his angels. You see, okay, Michael being the archangel and fighting against Satan and his angels, meaning Esau, Edom. Okay, and there will be a war in heaven, meaning in the skies. You see, but the reason he knows that and he's prep made preparations for it is because of the scriptures. Okay, because of that foresight, but really it's not for him. The foresight he has is uh, basically getting him ready to be destroyed and to help fulfill prophecy. So it's such a, it's such a beautiful thing, man. We ought to thank the Heavenly Father, man. Okay, this is um this is Book of Revelations, chapter three. Okay. And, um, you know, obviously it's Yahweh Shah speaking and this was to the churches. Okay. And when you read a lot of these, these, uh, uh, when he, uh, the, to the seven churches, he was basically cursing them out, getting on them. Okay. But he was commending them for the things that they did right and getting on them for the things that they did wrong. Okay. But this is, um, Revelations chapter three and 18. It says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Okay. And obviously, Yahweh Shah is not telling these men to go and buy gold chains <laughs> on Cuban link. Okay. That gold is referring to what? This truth, these scriptures. Okay. It says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Okay. And like the scriptures say, what? Buy the truth and sell it not. Meaning, put it time and effort. And if it comes to it, spend money. Okay, like brothers who have cameras and uh, drive cars, make major commutes, long, long commutes to camp. Okay, buy Bibles, expensive Bibles, uh, books that uh, uh, we use as reference points for the truth. Okay, putting time and money, paying the parking lot every, <laughs> going into the parking lot, paying the park every single week of the year. Okay, which a, hey, which is our reasonable service, you know. And that's what, you know, uh, uh, you know, I like to say, man, when it comes to this truth within my means, I don't have a limit, man. OK, I'll spend out for this truth. Why? Because the scriptures tell you to it says buy the truth and sell it not. OK. And but like I say, that doesn't literally mean just pay, pay somebody to teach you. Nah, nah, it ain't going to happen like that. If that's the case, everybody will be doing it. This is uh, Proverbs 3 and 18. It says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. Okay. And it's not talking about financially, but obviously, okay, it's going to manifest if we seek wisdom first, like the preacher did. You see, that's an example. You see, it says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and and white raiment, you see, your garments clean, meaning being purified, cleansed, okay, being ready for that the, the wedding, you know, to meet the bridegroom, which is Yahweh Shai. It says, May be mayest be rich and white and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Okay, and what does it mean by shame of thy nakedness? Well, when you go back to the garden, Adam and Eve, okay, once they had eaten from the forbidden tree, uh, uh, which, you know, is a parable, okay, um, they would they knew that they were naked, okay? They tried to hide itself, and what does that mean, that nakedness? Meaning you don't have the covering of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, you see? It says, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, you see, and that's what we're constantly doing by being obedient, walking in this ministry, putting out these shows, praying, fasting, uh, uh, giving double honors to the elder apostles, praying for brothers, asking the Lord to send uh, our healings. OK, just walking in his faith. That is the, we're doing that now. You see. It says and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. OK, and that's the point, you see, and that's exactly what the Heavenly Father has done. OK, and the elder Apostle Gabar always goes into that of being visionaries. OK, actually seeing the things that we're reading. OK, and that hey, once you can do that, it, 
Hey, then you can walk like uh, the, the definition of the word foresight with that cautionness. You see? Because you can see it. And, and we wholeheartedly believe because the scriptures command us to what? Be fully persuaded in our own mind. Okay? Because if you're not, what are you doing this for? You know, this is not a game. This is nothing to play with. This is deadly serious. Okay? But it all begins with what? That foresight, being visionaries, actually seeing. Okay? When you close your eyes or sometimes or not even, you just think in your mind and you see America burning from uh, all four corners. Actually envisioning being in that chariot and seeing the uh, the uh, the lake of fire, okay? That glad that the, the, the uh, sea of glass mingled with fire, you know. Actually seeing these things, okay? It puts a level of fear in you, okay? Um, but I read that again, you know, because I. I, I Kind of broke it up a little bit, but it says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that uh, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thy eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. OK, and that's exactly what the Heavenly Father has done. And we, we ought to be thankful, man, because one of the main things, you know, well, you know, outside of us being called into this thing and actually having to teach is to have that eye salve and that foresight so we can <laughs> so we can hide from the foresaid dangers, man. OK, and that's going to be a hey, when these when shit hits the fan, that's going to be the most coveted thing. And the scriptures tell us that they're going to seek to and fro high and low for the prophets and they shall not be able to find them. Okay, because now everybody wants to know prophecy. Everybody wants to know what's going to happen next. What's going to happen next? Well, that Bible that was sitting on Granny's piano that's collecting dust told you, you see. And really, that that's the kicker. Okay, this is not like we have a, a Urim and Thummim. Okay, or a, or, 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 or uh, a crystal ball and we rub it and it tells us, or we go to a, a, a palm reading and it tells us what's going to happen in the future. No, it's written right there in the Bible. OK, and if you're really seeking and trying to figure it out, guess what? You're an Israelite. The Heavenly Father is going to reveal it to you. You see. But you should know them by their fruits. And the majority of our people are not seeking this, man. They're trying to figure out how. And if they are, quote unquote, in the know, they're trying to figure out how they can upset prophecy. Why? Because they don't understand, understand okay, the true culprit or the true power Behind what's going on, okay? They want to chalk it up to oh well, uh, 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 what's 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 it called? Um, climate, uh, climate change, and you know, like it's gonna get better one day. Uh, uh, that's not what the scriptures say, man. Okay, we are witnessing the downfall of a society and a man's kingdom. Okay, and the uprise of the kingdom of heaven. You see. So when you're fighting against or going against what's actually happening, you actually find yourself fighting with the Heavenly Father, as the scriptures say. OK, so let's get one more. and We'll close this thing on out. This is the book of Matthews, chapter 13. And we're going to get all the meat off of this. So bear with me. This is Matthew, chapter 13. And we'll start at 10. And it reads. And the disciples came and said unto him. Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Okay. And as we know, Yahweh Shai, you know, he spoke in parables when it was a great multitude around. He spoke in parables. And this is the reason why. Verse 11. He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of, of heaven. But to them, it is not given. Okay. And that's a harsh reality. A lot, a lot of people don't want to swallow, but it's okay. So, Corey, the Lord is going to force feed it down your mouth in the form of pestilence, plagues, famine, okay, death and destruction, and ultimately thermonuclear holocaust, okay, and chariot fire, okay? You don't, have to, you don't have to ingest it now, but it says it plain, okay? He told the disciples, this is for you. It ain't for all these other Johnny-come-latelys, okay? And the reality is they don't really want it because if they did, they would have continued to follow Yahweh Shah. 
Okay, but I also understand that Yahweh Shah knew who it was for and knew who it wasn't for. You see, but we don't have that capability now. And that's why we go out to the highways and hedges week in and week out, whether they hear or forbear. Okay, because ultimately we're making Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai 100% blameless. You see, verse 12, for, so, for whosoever hath to him shall be given and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever have not from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Verse 13. Therefore speak I to them in parables because they seeing see not and hearing they hear not. Neither do they understand. Okay, and we see it all the time. We see it all the time. Guys coming up and like even with the elder apostles, uh, uh, elder apostle Tahar, elder apostle Kabar, I believe it, not the weekend that just passed, the weekend prior to that, dealing with that guy, he just couldn't get it. And you saw the elder apostle Kabar, you know, basically wipe, uh, dust his hands off. Like this guy, ain't, it's not for him. He can't get it. Okay. But the elder apostle Tahar was toiling and trying to, but hey, you see, we see it all the time. Okay. You had guys come up to camp, stand out there for an hour, you know? And it's like we were talking to a wall, but the, showing the love that we have, we try to deal. We we try to will and deal, okay? But we see it, like Yahweh Shah said. It says thirteen again. Therefore, speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Okay, and these people see what's going on in the world. Okay, you should be asking questions. Really, you should be trying to tap into your power or trying to find your power. And the reality is we are the examples of that because that's what we did. You know, now, obviously, the Wadi Habashim Al Shah for putting that anointing and that spirit on us to do so. OK, but it is possible. OK, it is possible. But the reality is these people are not looking for that. Like I mentioned earlier, verse 14, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of uh, Isaiah, basically. It says, which saith, by hearing, ye shall hear and shall not understand. And seeing, ye shall see and shall not perceive. Verse 15, for this people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. You see why? Because when you're dealing with the heavenly father and his son, you know, they don't go back on their word. They don't change the scriptures say what Malachi, what three and six for I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. So they don't change. What they said is what they said. So if you hear this word and it, and it, uh, uh, um, it, uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It meshes with your spirit. You know, they got to heal you. They got to convert you. Okay. And put you in the faith. But the reality is there's a predestination. Okay. There's an election that the heavenly father chose from the beginning. Okay. Which can be added to nor change. Why? Malachi 3 and 6. For I am the most I change not. So the men that he elected from the beginning are going to be the same men, women and children that are delivered in the end times. Okay. And those that this ain't for. Their ears are going to be uh, uh, closed and their eyes are going to be shut. Okay. And really, that's going to be done through their own conceits. Okay. And through their own wickedness. OK, because the reality is when the heavenly father called, they didn't answer. You see, because people say, well, that ain't fair. <laughs> and first of all, you're wrong for saying the heavenly father ain't fair. OK, look at your, the, the human anatomy. Look at your body. OK, look at your heartbeat. Look at all the bullshit you eat. Yet you wake up every morning. Look at the sun coming up, the moon coming up. OK, the different seasons, although Esau Edom is fucking that up, <laughs> you know. But look, look at all the things that go on without your control. And for you to say the heavenly father is unfair. No, like the scriptures say, your ways are unfair. You're the one that's not being obedient. You're the one that has forsaken him over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. 
And guess what? We've done the same. But now the Heavenly Father has put the spirit on us to repent, man. Okay? Showing you it is possible. But for the majority of our people, they just will not repent. Okay? Verse 16. It says, but blessed are your eyes. Okay? Going into that foresight. Blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Verse 17. For verily say, uh, for verily, meaning truly, for verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them. And to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Okay. Now, guess what? He was speaking to the twelve. Because remember, in context, the 12 came to him saying, why do you speak to the people in parables? Okay, where well, is the answer? Okay, but he told them what? Blessed are your eyes for they see. Why? Because they have the eyes out. The true teacher in Yahweh shop was with them. He was showing and he, and he he goes on. And I believe that's what Matthew. Or is it John? I believe John 15 or 14. Where he says everything the heavenly father has revealed to, or shown him, he has not uh, held back from showing them. Okay. But now guess what? You fast forward 2000 years later. Okay. We have a better understanding than the 12 did. You see, or a better understanding than John did. Okay. Does that make us better than him? Of course not. Okay. Why? Because we're in our lot in this season. You see, and the reality is John the Revelator is back because the scripture said he would be back. Okay. And a lot of the ancient prophets, you know, and Lord willing, we're those men. We're back. And this was always for us. You see, like Yahweh Shah said, blessed are you because you've been with me from the beginning. Okay. But the key point, it says, blessed are you. Let me get back to it. I read 17 again. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them. And to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Okay. So guess what? When you fast, like I said, you fast forward 2000 years, we've heard things that the 12 didn't hear. We've heard things that uh, are seen things that the 12 didn't see that they longed for. You know, they always ask, well, so when shall it be the end of these times and the beginning of it that followeth? Okay. And he had to basically give them that heart, pull out the violin. <laughs> You know, and, and, and heartbreak hotel them, you know, but they weren't broken and bitter. They bared their cross unto death. OK, which we know all, you know, all of them were put to death. OK. You know, but they bared their cross. And, and like Yahweh Shah told him in the regeneration, you're going to sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. OK. And we wholeheartedly believe that the 12 are back now. OK. Or were here. Or had a part in pushing his ministry. Okay. Going back to King Masha. Contrary to what niggas believe. Or, or what niggas say. Fuck you. That's what we believe. Okay. King Masha was King David. Period. Point blank. Okay. And then the reality is. You know. Yahweh Shah told the 12. You know. Who do men say that I am? He didn't condemn them for saying, oh, some say this or some say that. He didn't condemn them. He didn't say, oh, y'all going off, y'all teaching the wrong doctrine. He didn't say that, okay? That, that what, what he asked them was basically him saying, speaking as a man, who do men say that I am? Okay? And that was always a custom of Israel, you see? So our elder apostles believe that, and other men believe that King, uh, 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 King Masha was King David. So that's what we believe. And ain't no condemnation in that, man. Okay? We're not going to go into the scriptures and pull them out and say, see? See, that's King David. No, no, that's what we believe through faith. Okay? And it says, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it on that. Yeah. So, yeah, brothers. Hey, let's be thankful, man, that we, we can see, man. Because, man, just imagine being blinded in these times, man, which the majority of our people are. Okay, it's going to be a sad, sad song, but that's what they're asking for. You know, ain't no pity for nobody. Okay, as, as much prophecy and as much uh, things, quote unquote, of biblical proportion that are happening and people still in their folly. Man, fuck these people, man. Okay, lest they repent. 
you know, let's continue to do what we were called to do and um, watch as well as pray. OK, so I believe I hit the point and Lord willing, that was edifying. So with that, I say Shalom.